when you throw yourself into photography, it has this crazy way of putting you exactly where you need to be. The nice thing is, once they've finished eating, people tend to be less angry. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's a universal truth. The peak of our creative energy seems to be at the beginning of a new adventure and after a transcendent new experience. It's at these two times that it seems like you're seeing the world through new eyes. Which is why I've subscribed to this idea of kicking off any photography adventure with something ambitious. I've always had this desire to bring my studio photography experience to communities all around the world. In this instance, it involved me tracking two six foot backdrops all the way to India, building a set on location and doing it within an existing community. In this case, it was the Kasi Meta Fish Market in Chennai. Look, I didn't know if anyone was gonna show up, if we were gonna get yelled at or thrown out of here, but my idea was very basic, that if I went in with honest intentions, with the hope of, again, giving my photography to others, right? That this, this experience was more about leaving something behind than taking something for myself, that I could build these genuine connections and people would sense that, they would feel that, and well, that's exactly what happened. Okay, back up, back up, back up, back up, back, back up, up, back up. 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 Street photography, however you want to define it, has this palpable way of giving back to the community and the subjects that it draws its inspiration from. Now, most people won't classify this as street photography, especially if you're a purist, but I think that's kind of the beauty of the genre. It's whatever you want to make of it. Growing up as a South Asian, seafood was a staple in our diet. And to be able to visit the heart of where that commerce begins, build a set, take these portraits, deliver that experience, it was just a great fucking way to start this trip. And it was a great reminder that you don't have to spend all the time and energy to figure out what street photography ought to be. Instead, you just do the work and figure out who you need to be. Welcome to Church and Street, where I throw myself into some photography adventures around the world and connect with some remarkable people along the way. For our first episode, I want to bring you to one of my most special places in my heart, Chennai, India. This city is home to over 6 million Tamil Indians, a vibrant food scene, and a massive film industry. We'd get a taste of that industry really early when the singer-songwriter and our friend D would be accepting an award at the Indian equivalent of the Oscars. So we didn't expect to be shooting a media event, let alone the Indian equivalent of the Oscars. So we'll see what the setup, how it holds up. But here's the thing, look, here's the thing. You do enough reps, it doesn't even matter what camera, what lens you have. You do enough reps, you'll find a way to capture it in a really interesting, eclectic way. And hopefully your way. And that's what we're gonna try to do tonight. Break a few rules, take some nice pictures, and try not to get deported. This assignment came with a day's notice, the opportunity to capture intimate portraits of a massively talented artist at one of the most prestigious award shows in the country. Ready or not, you just have to say yes. 
in his photography masterclass, Joel Meyerowitz was waxing poetic about saying yes to the photograph and motherfucker, I felt that in my core. I heard that and I just knew what it meant, at least for me. It means that you forget about the what ifs and hypotheticals, you just find a way and you say yes, you press the shutter and you move forward. This is the philosophy that found us in a posh hotel doing what we do. I think when you make a habit of saying yes and, and moving forward with your work, it has this uh, mechanism in which it starts to make photography more instinctual. You start to feel it more than you actually see it. And this becomes invaluable when you don't know what the situation might hold. Now, hotel suites can seem spacious at first, but when you throw in a talent, her mom, five makeup artists, a cameraman, and his assistant, well, suddenly it starts to feel tighter than ladies' night at the hottest dive bar in New York. But even through this, it's the hundreds or thousands of times of saying yes to the photograph beforehand that keeps you sharp, that, that allows you to find an interesting composition or two in a pretty rudimentary scene. While much of my trip here was gonna be about exploring colors and texture and contrast, for this scene, I wanted to just focus on black and white and just you know try to capture some elegance. I just used one camera with a little flash on a trigger and varied the distance and angle to really bring out the contrast and try to set a different kind of mood. All in all, the goal was to really encapsulate the entire experience of a talented artist getting ready for a massive night. With an assignment like this, the first thing I'm thinking about is, you know, how do we bring the viewer into this experience, right? This, this experience that otherwise is a very private matter. You never really get to see this. How can we bring them in, in a tasteful way? I think that's the goal, right? That's the bar. So the goal was to get that old Hollywood look, you know, getting ready for the Oscars kind of vibe. I think we crushed it. I think we crushed it. I'm gonna get to the car, drop the photos to the phone, throw them up there, take some more photos. Um, this setup is just killing it, man. I'm telling you, M11, battery life, insane. Sumlex 1.4, insane. We're shooting at an F8 with the flash here, and it's just like the perfect sort of vibe. Vibe, we've been using that word a lot. It's a perfect vibe for this kind of event. So we're gonna head over. It's the Film Fair Awards. We're guests. We're gonna take some shots and see what happens. Who has my phone number? You do? Oh my god, you look so Through this experience, I just kind of sank into a survival mode just to make sure that we got out of there safely and nothing escalated. Uh, but this was kind of that punch in the mouth moment, right? Where, oh, you think you're hot shit that you got a nice photograph or two? Well, try this on for size. We, we had an interesting experience at this award show and by the end of it, I was just ready to get back to something a little bit more comfortable or I should say a little bit more familiar. North Chennai has this unfair reputation of being this drug-infested borough that demands over-policing. The reality is that most of the people here are the kindest and most generous individuals you'll ever come across this city. I got to spend time with a group of individuals that ran an after-school program focused in this part of Chennai that looks to give kids access to more educational resources, activities, and even music. <laughs> These 
these are the moments in your photography adventure that you hope for, right? That you come across these genuine and impassioned individuals that are doing the best they can to support the community that they're from. And you can't help but see how dedicated they are and all of a sudden just have a bit more tenacity to how you want to approach your craft. It really is something inspiring. It's our privilege to be invited here. It's our gift that we are allowed to be in this space and interact with all these people and document an evening with them. The entire moment there uh, together, it, it was something that just reminded us of what we're capable of when you leave your prejudices at home, right? And to be honest, after that, I was just even more fired up for the days ahead. I tried something a little unconventional on this trip, and that was to use one camera and one lens. For this particular trip, I stuck to a 35 millimeter lens for the entire photography experience. This perspective, it's something that I feel really comfortable with. It caters to how often I see the world around me, but it's malleable, where I can take a few steps and get something that's closer or wider. There's a stillness to photography that I think you inherit when you commit to just one body and one lens. When you remove choice out of the equation, all of a sudden there's no hesitation around what you need. You just pick up your kit and get to work. And let's be honest, committing to just one lens is easy when you have something as good as the modern Sumo Lux 35 from Leica. This thing was designed to be perfect at the widest aperture and all the way through. With this by my side, there was never a doubt in my mind. You just had to pick it up and point it in the right direction. This kid, this kid, he was leaned up just like this. And as we pass by, you'd think he was an extra in a movie, if not the leading role, right? Perry's Market, it's a, it's a vibrant place with so much going on. And you walk the streets as you go from you know, lane to lane, each one is associated with a different trade and skill and, and set of shops, right? This is one of the most thrilling walks I've been on in this city. And what makes it so special is the people here. You know, I hear it more and more. If you wanna make it as a photographer, you gotta go harder, you gotta go into video, you gotta make reels, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. And I'll be honest, I hear this and a lot of time I'm just thinking, nah, you gotta shut the f up. I wish I could take the feeling that I feel when I'm capturing moments like this, package it up and give it to the you gotta people, you know? When you're in the markets and you're having these interactions, it is such a different kind of experience that it almost kills any attraction for impressions, views and, and internet clout. So if you're asking me, and it's about genuine fulfillment here, the only thing you gotta do as a photographer is practice your photography. Everything else, everything else is a distant second. It was always a dream of mine and we made it happen. We've opened a chain of beauty salons starting in India. Cut your top off to get out of hand. The discipline you develop to constantly be creating will inevitably create this magnetism for other disciplined creatives. Being the home of a massive film and music industry, Chennai is packed with a ton of multi-talented creators like my friend Ken Royson. Director, writer, cinematographer, and artist manager, Ken has found a way to cultivate a suite of skills to be constantly busy and putting out new material. And shit, it's just inspiring to be around. On one hand, the work ethic alone makes you want to rise to the occasion. And on the other, people like Ken become invaluable in sharing pockets and stories that don't get enough attention. And that's what led us to the state's busiest flower market at four in the morning. There's the hardship that you're born with and the hardship that you choose in life. 
and the hardship that you choose has a profound way in dictating where you find joy in your journey. Going to a flower market in the middle of a thunderstorm with a few hours of sleep, this is the kind of hardship that I will choose over and over and over again. The juice will always be worth the squeeze for me. And if I'm being honest, it's not even about any photograph, it's about the photography. Just getting out there and just practicing and getting more reps under your belt and, and developing yourself as a creative. This type of elevated repetition, you know, where you're doing it with intention, I think it has this incredible way of just preparing you. I think that when it comes to street photography, again, however you want to define it, the more you put into it, the more it has a way of preparing you for all kinds of shooting environments. If I could describe it, it's like the unconventional workouts that target smaller, more specific, stabilizing muscles in your body, as opposed to more traditional, general workouts that target one large muscle group, right? You develop these stabilizing muscles and, and it's designed to protect and support you across varying physical activities. I believe street photography is that unconventional workout for photographers where it prepares you for unconventional shooting environments. What's amazing about this city is that even if you're a foreigner, foreigner no matter what, 99% of the people you can stop and ask them for directions and they're gonna take time out of their day to help. No one's in too much of a rush to not help you. That's, what, that's very unique about this city. The only comedic thing is that the quality of the directions might vary from person to person. So you have some people that give you standard directions, but then you have some people, and I'll translate them for you, that I'll say, you know, go 200 meters this way, uh, you'll see a sleeping dog, take a left there, then you go, uh, you know, once you shift into third gear, about that time, you'll see another one, you take a right over there, keep going, you'll smell something funky at that point, stop for five seconds, you know, say a prayer, and then keep going straight ahead. So, while the, the quality of the directions might vary from person to person, um, it is admirable that just about any person you ask, regardless of, you know, sex, race, and, and job description, they'll take time to stop and help you. Santos Narayanan has been in the film and music industry for well over a decade and has established a legendary catalog of work in that time. He's also a dear friend that invited us to freely capture the controlled chaos around his work and lifestyle. From rehearsals to recording sessions to ceremonies to candid moments, it was just a fun situation to bring my street photography energy into. I also started to get more of an appreciation for the photojournalist that would go out for Time or Life magazine following one subject and looking to stitch together a meaningful story. This is a lot harder than it looks. I think it was the author Anais Nin that coined it in the 60s that we don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. Ultimately, whatever we capture as photographers, as soon as it's published, we relinquish the story to the viewer. We can help guide or inform it through our composition. Hell, we can even add vocabulary to it, but at the end of the day, the viewer sees the image as themselves. To document a person or a place and craft a strong, meaningful connective tissue is very hard to do. And through this experience, I just realized I, we owe a lot to photojournalists because they've been on the bleeding edge of this for generations. I capture thousands and thousands and thousands of images each year, right? And for me, genuinely, if one photograph 
can stand head and shoulders above the rest, just one, it would make the entire year worth it for me. And on this trip, I was fortunate to capture that one photograph. I keep talking about it, photography in service of others. And while we were in Chennai, we were tipped off about this welfare school and the idea of class pictures was completely foreign to them. So I wanted to make it my mission to spend a day to go there and lend my service to them to really create something meaningful for them. We built our set right on their playground, if you could call it that, and started taking portraits one after the next. And you know, some kids needed more direction than others, but we didn't want to be too prescriptive. We really just want to capture them and be there in service of them. For me, when I was taking those images, I just wanted to make them feel like the most important person in that moment. Toward the end of our session, this young girl, she jumps up, takes this pose, and I tell you, man, I was just, shot through the soul, right? Like the look, the pose, it's something that freezes you. And you know, if you wait too long, you might actually miss the moment. What made this image special to me was all the little details that kind of came together and sort of contrasted the emotion that's been given here. You have this playground riddled with bricks and glass. You have the class table and bench that's, that's elevating our subject above it all. And you just have this look, this look that just pierces you. There's other things at play here, but largely that's what comes together for me and makes this the most special image that I shot that year. I don't think there's a right way to give back with photography. You sort of just have to feel it out and see what resonates most. What I do believe is that you as a photographer should think about how you're contributing to a space with your photography. For generations, and it's still happening now, artists from the West have fetishized South Asian culture, right? Where they've benefited from people far less privileged than they are. There's a lineage of prolific work that still informs photographers today that for some people unknowingly instills this sense of entitlement. You know, you have these individuals that will grab their tour guide, swoop in, capture these moments, no genuine interaction, take it and leave. And what's even more f***ed up is that there's an audience of people and brands that can't see through it all, that celebrate this behavior. But also, you can't be surprised by this, right? I mean, these people, they haven't been taught any better. They don't know any better. The responsibility is on other photographers to lead by example and to share their stories, for them to go out and take the responsibility to do things in a manner that maintains a genuine relationship that treats other people with dignity and respect. We should make it our highest priority to donate our time, money, and expertise wherever we can in an effort to build bridges with the people in front of our camera. Talk to as many of the subjects as you can. Maybe it's after you take the photo, but try to talk to them. It's easy to feel disconnected from someone from another part of the world, but it doesn't have to be that way. And yeah, I know this might sound f***ing cringy to some people, but at some point, we have to show the work. We have to show the work. We have to show that this photographic journey of ours, we have to show that it doesn't have to be this cold, disenfranchising rat race that commodifies the people in front of our cameras. We have to show that someone else's culture is not our aesthetic. I mentioned it earlier that that the peak creative energy when you go on a photography adventure is at the beginning and after a transcendent experience and being invited with open arms to this school. This was that transcendent experience for me. By the end of it, I had a sense of clarity and I was just even more hungry to go out and share stories like this, that, that I knew we were on the right path. And to be honest, even talking about it now, I'm excited to hear more stories like this from other creators around the world. 
When you throw yourself into photography, it has this crazy way of putting you exactly where you need to be. Like Roger Clemens, juice to the gills. I threw myself into this photography adventure in Chennai and it put me in places I couldn't even imagine. This city has given me so much and in return, I want to believe that I've given something back. Art for art's sake, photography in service of others, and a genuine curiosity for the person next to me. These serve as guiding principles on my trips to orient myself and my camera in the right direction. This is the road less traveled, but it doesn't have to be. This is something we can all do, even in our own hometown. In three short weeks, Chennai became street photography heaven for me, a place I've been to several times in my youth, but still managed to show me a side I've never seen before. So if there's any takeaway from this experience is to make sure that you're always drinking bottled water so you don't sh yourself on a production. Sorry, wait, totally different trip. If there's anything to be taken away from this is that if you're a photographer, go ahead and throw yourself wholeheartedly into photography. Commit to the journey and enjoy the ride.